So the last talk is from uh, Christoph Posch, co-founder and CTO of Prophecy. Okay, uh, thanks everyone. It's getting late. We are all tired. At least I am. So let's uh, try to be fast. <coughs> so the, this talk is about event sensors for embedded AGI vision applications. And uh, so I, I want to look at event sensors from the System, uh, for the, from the user perspective, so uh, uh, users in this in this case are system integrators or camera builders or application developers, and uh, I want to to look a little bit on uh, why actually the adoption of event-based technology has been slower than many have actually expected. And so what are actually the, the challenges for event sensors to be used and integrated in vision systems? And um, so first of all, there's use cases for event sensors are all over the place. There's, there's a very diverse field of applications from, from industrial to IoT to mobile to automotive. This is, of course, this is very good, but it's, there's a lot of different uh, requirements from the application side. Uh, we have this unconventional format of the event data that many people used to not know what to do with them. This actually this relatively unfam unfam unfamiliar encoding of, of the dynamic visual information in the form of events. There are non-constant data rates. Interfaces are not standardized. There's, there are no protocols that are used. For so this is it's all over the place. So we have we have looked at uh, and tried to to overcome some of these problems and and develop a, a new generation of of sensors that try to to get a bit better with some of these points. So what do I mean by integrability and usability in in a vision system? I think there are two buckets of of, of features that we need to look in. The first is um, you need to prepare the event data for transmission and for processing. And we have built in several features into the new sensor that pre-process the data, that filters them, that formats them, etc. We will see much more about that in a minute. Um, we need to be compatible with uh, industry standard interfaces like MIP or DCMI. Um, we also want to be able to connect to not, not non-mainstream compute platforms like uh, neuromorphic processors, SNN accelerators, and this, this kind of, of processors. Um, and the second bucket of, of, of uh, features that we th think is, is necessary for HAI vision is um, power. Of course, latency and power are always the two like, uh, main KPIs that people, when they talk about neuromorphic vision systems, are bragging about. So um, what we try to build into this sensor is uh, the different modes of, of operation that, that give you different uh, power consumptions that you can adapt. Actually, you can switch between it. So on. we'll see that also in a second better. Um, we want to have like really ultra low power operation where the sensor can, can wake up itself or, or the system. Uh, we do on-chip power management and we do... Uh, we built in an embedded microcontroller for for all kinds of different usages. We will we will see that. So what this is this is the uh, like the overview. This is the uh, a block diagram of, of this of this new sensor family. Uh, this this first chip has a, a relatively small pixel array. It's only 320 by 320. That gives an optical format of one fifth inch. The, the sensor itself is the chip itself is relatively small with 13 square millimeters. It's fabricated using a stacked. PSI CIS on CMOS with a pixel pitch of 6.3. And here are the, the features that I'm going to uh, explain a little bit. We have uh, sensor features that are uh, global contrast detector. We have this power mode I was talking about already. Uh, we have a very flexible region of interest programming that can be reprogrammed on the fly and do saliency, et cetera, these kind of things. A temperature sensor, ambient light sensor on the chip. And then we have an, an uh, digital event signal processing pipeline on the chip that does all kinds of things from noise and flicker filtering, edge enhancement filtering, event rate controller, data format, etc. And then we have this embedded RISC-V CPU. We have two uh, standard interfaces that, that can adapt to different requirements from, of, of applications. And configuration interfaces are also very standard. Okay, f let's go into some of these features a little better. So we have what we call uh, 
GCD, or con uh, global contrast detectors, which are basically uh, event detector circuitry that works on on the on this sum of photocoins of, of several pixels. So we actually we, we subdivide the the array of, of of 320 by 320 into nine subarrays of 108 by 108 pixels and and feed the sum of photocoins to this to these circuits that that do. Uh, 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 activity monitoring or change detection, as as you would expect from a single pixel, and by doing that, you can you can do very very low power operations, uh, create uh, smart um, like smart PIR, if you want, and and wake up either yourself as a sensor to go into an, another power mode or to to wake up also a system. Um, the next thing is uh, we have this very flexible reach of interest programming that that can actually uh, pixel individually uh, in enable, in enable or disable the the pixels. We use this for many different things, from from hot pixel removal to uh, fully customizable ROI shapes. I'll, I'll see. Actually, something like this, for example, you can you can do this on the fly. You can reprogram them very fast because we have a very uh, a, a hardware uh, accelerated uh, Windows controller. We can uh, program the eight, up to eighteen different uh, ROI windows at the same time and, and move them around very quickly across the across the sensor array. This can be used for uh, like uh, reach of interest that that moves around the sensor array, for example. Also, um, now to for the uh, digital uh, event signal processing pipeline, so we're starting from the pixel array, we first have an, an, an random noise filter that, that filters out a little bit like what we have heard before, actually this is a similar kind of filtering of, of random noise events. An anti-flicker filter, which I'll show in a little more detail in a second. Then we have a, an edge enhancement filter. We have a, an ERC, event rate controller, that very you can program actually a, a maximum or a limit event rate that will never be exceeded by the output interface. Uh, if if the events uh, internally get ab above this this programmed uh, uh, threshold, then events are dropped in a systematic smart way. You can actually choose between different drop uh, strategies, like every other column or line or random in space and time. Also, so there's many ways to uh, smart to do a smart reduction of, of event rates. Then we have a, a, f a data formatting block that allows you to, to, to uh, encode this, the, the, bit, the, the event stream into different data formats. I'll also show a few of them later. Then we have an, another actually branch in the pipeline that, that does an aggregated uh, data formatting. We, we produce on the chip uh, histograms or of, of event frames that we can read them out through one of those two interfaces I was already speaking about. So we have a MIP interface and a CMOS parallel interface. Um, so a little bit about w some of those uh, processing blocks. We have the uh, anti-flicker filter, also a little bit we've heard before from, from Nivasan, for example. They're also looking at, at anti-flicker filters. Uh, Samsung has done similar things as, as well. So what we, as, as you know, natural scenes often contain uh, modulated light sources such as for example here on the on the top this is a this is a, a tunnel actually we drive through a tunnel here and the, and the light that illuminates the tunnel is, is flickering at 50 hertz for example very very uh, huge data rates if you if you drive actually and, and this, this and on top you have these flickering light sources here yeah, you produce a lot of, of data that you don't actually want also our street lights here on the bottom here this, these are street lights that, that flicker at, at 50 or 100 hertz or something like that. So producing a huge amount of, of, of nonsense data that you don't want. So what we are doing actually a digital notch filters for, for, uh, for to remove this, 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 uh, this events from, from the stream. Uh, we can actually hear already some, some results. We can actually pro program a, a center frequency and, and uh, the width of these notch filters. And you can see they are very effective. Uh, these are, um, Showing uh, events per per period of a, of a modulated uh, stimulus, and you see that that the in the in the in the band stop parts of the of the of the of the spectrum, you see that the the, the reduction in, in in events of of this of this frequency are is is two two others or three. Uh, 
two and a half orders of magnitude are around that. So this is this works really well. You can also invert this, and you can actually for very very special applications where you actually want to detect, for example, a single uh, flicker frequency f because you're looking for active market tracking or something like that. You can actually invert the whole thing and, and do the same thing in with a, a band pass notch filter. Um, as I said before, we have a risk 5 CPU on, on, on the chip that allows you to do several things like we do the, the boot of the, of the sensor from at power up. So the time to first data is very short. It, it supports power management. It, we, we can insert metadata into the MIPI stream, for example, like, like a frame number, data statistics, etc. But we don't do any like algorithm-based event processing on the, on the chip itself. Um, for the uh, interfacing to different compute platforms, here are just three examples of, of different uh, compute platforms that you want to actually be able to, to connect to. So that the top one is, for example, a a normal application processor where you want to to stream this this uh, high bandwidth uh, data to to do some kind of application where we use the full uh, digital pipeline to to pre-process and, and format the data then they are streamed through through MIPI to the application processor. In the middle we have, for example, a, a very low power microcontroller that uh, does some kind of CNN based HII application to this. Uh, platform we would for example stream uh, uh, either frames of events or event histograms or something like that at, at very low power using for example our, our uh, DCMI compatible parallel interface. Or at the bottom we have uh, for example a neuromorphic processor that, that likes to receive direct a ER input, uh, for example a spiking neural network uh, uh, implementation, so there's no timestamps, for example, we directly stream the events through, through our interfaces. So these this different data, uh, again, as I said before, we, we have AR, we have these this timed events using uh, some kind of compressed data formats, and we have this, this, this aggregated data formats, and we have these two interfaces, so we have this parallel interface for very low power and low latency transmission to, to our compute platforms. This, it's adjustable, so you can select between f four to eight bits of, of CMOS uh, parallel uh, up to almost 300 megavents per second, which is more than enough probably for this small array size in, in most cases. Or we have the a MIPI interface, it's a one lane, a 1.5 gigabit per second. Uh, that would give you a theoretical upper limit of one gigavent per second, which is uh, more, more than by far more than enough to uh, of bandwidth for for this for this array size. Here we we also transmit com compressed or uncompressed vector uh, event data or this this aggregated formats as well. Uh, for the power modes, uh, as I said before, we have, we try to to implement several uh, modes of operation of this sensor. Where we start from a super low power mode, it's called here PM0. But basically, everything is off except actually we we route the uh, the the photodiode signals from the from the from the from the pixels to to this uh, GCD blocks for for a very low level activity monitoring and detection. Then we have we have another uh, next uh, level of, of low power mode where we switch on this the uh, CPU and and pre-process this this data from this nine nine uh, um, arrays of, of pixels and, and and do some more elaborate smart uh, presence monitoring uh, and and so on and then we we can go up to to fu full. Uh, Full resolution uh, pixel array um, activity detection to full streaming modes. Um, here is the, some examples. So again, we, we do, for example, this 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 nine uh, nine regions of of of, uh, of uh, GCD. Uh, Activity monitoring in this mode, the, the sensor actually runs at 35 microwatts, which is uh, you can really do an always-on. Uh, uh, a sensing system here, and, and use this this um, activity monitoring or detection to to either switch on uh, or switch the sensor to one of, one of the other power modes. So this, this, these are hierarchical, so you can go between switch between those different power modes uh, seamlessly, or also uh, create uh, wake up signals on on an external pin to to for example wake up your your processor to to look at what's happening. 
and there are the different power modes. So we have this this um, super low power mode at 35 microwatts. We have another one that this is more elaborate with with this, as, as I mentioned before, this pre-processing of the of this data with the with the on on board uh, on chip uh, CPU that's still below one milliwatt. The next mode is at 2.5 milliwatts in the full streaming modes, depending on the on the interface uh, between. 3.5 milliwatts up to 20 milliwatts and more if you go full full steam with the MIPI interface. Here this is just to compare actually what what the two interfaces uh, give you in, in terms of power consumption. So um, MIPI is an, an interface that has a, a large overhead so it, 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 it consumes much more power so you, you can see that actually the interface here consumes more, more power than the sensor itself. While for the, the parallel interface, you can you can go to much lower power consumptions. Also, the, the bandwidth, of course, is a bit limited here. But uh, for for many edge edge applications, I would say that the, the parallel interface is the interface of choice, probably. Um, summary conclusion here: so we have a, we have designed this this sensor for specifically for for edge applications. So this is power where power and latency are typically the, the most important KPIs. So it's fabricated on a stack BSI CIS 65 on CMOS 40 nanometer. We have these different f uh, features for pre-processing, filtering, formatting the event data before they are streamed out of the out of the of, of the chip. And uh, we have these two interfaces to choose depending on your, on your application, your requirements on your system. Uh, different transmission options, different file formats, this uh, uh, hierarchy of power modes that you can use to, to, to build systems that, that are very effective in, in terms of power consumption. Um, that's it for it, and I want to close actually with a little teaser because we, are, we are also have a, a booth on, in the exhibition hall downstairs from tomorrow on, and we will show a few things here. For example, we also we actually are, are working a lot on on, on fusing uh, event data with uh, with RGB data with with frames. So we, for example, this is an example here of uh, still image deep layer, and you can see before and after. If I go back, you can appreciate actually the ball here. If you, so we, as, as, it, as it was described before, we use the event data that, that are accumulated during the exposure time of the frame. So here, actually, you see the ball, and which becomes actually pretty good. So this, this, uh, this, as we had before, this utilizes the the, the fact that you you can. Uh, Accumulate and, and store the events during the exposure time of, of, of your frame, and then use this, this information to to uh, remove the deep blur and, and get to a sharp frame. Um, some more applications that we are also having live demos in the at the booth. So of, uh, as also we have heard before, event based eye tracking is many people look at that. This is this is really working very well. You can do, do up to kilohertz uh, eye tracking, very robust. Um, this one has, I think, uh, UltraLeaf has shown this 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 live demo to, today in the at the at the poster session, using a, a stereo setup of, of of two of these of these cameras to to do this immersive uh, interaction with your computer. Or this is this is like a active marker tracking. So we we, we track this these different uh, light sources here. Every, every one of them is encoding a different. Uh, Identifier a bit pattern in, in in the in the modulated light output, and we can do this very robust and very fast tracking. You, you see that you always know which 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 one you are you are looking at because they all have this unique identifier. So for game game controllers or, or many other things that very need to have a very very fast very precise uh, position in in space and time. And this is this is our booth one four two three four. From tomorrow on, come and see us and see some of those demos. Thank you. Thank you.